Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue on with our uh, basic router configurations. Uh, so again, we have uh, the same router that we had before, the one uh, 1941 router. Um, I've already had the configurations uh, options done, uh, such as hostname, password, um, and message of the day. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to configure it with an IP address uh, on one of our interfaces, and we're going to add a switch and a router, or I'm sorry, excuse me, a switch and a host uh, to connect to our router. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add my devices to the network. Um, sticking with the network devices, if I come down here um, in the bottom left-hand corner, I click over on switches, I can see I have some, some switches that I can add to my network. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a 2950T uh, switch and drop it onto the network. Um, what this is is basically a switch is what, you, what a computer is used uh, to connect to the network. Our computers connect to switches, switches connect to routers. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to grab an end device. So I'm going to click on the end devices here, and I have different types of end devices. I'm going to go ahead and just grab a computer. So I've got my computer here. I'm going to let's move these around a little bit to uh, get um, everything situated. Oops. Uh, we're going to move things around so I, make, I can see them a little better. Um, and now I have these devices on there, but I need to connect them together. The way I connect them together is I come over here and I do my connections. Click on my connections, there's a little lightning bolt over here, and I have a lot of different types of connections. Uh, like devices, or I'm sorry, different devices uh, get connected with what we call a straight through cable. So a computer to a switch, you're going to use a straight through cable. So I'm going to click on the straight through cable, and I get this little, uh, what looks like a little cable over here. I'm going to click on the computer, and I'm going to use the fast Ethernet connection. I'm going to then connect that to a fast Ethernet connection on the switch. Do not connect it to the console, connect it to the fast Ethernet. Um, and now it's going to start, uh, you're going to get this green light here, and you're going to get an orange light here. Uh, the orange light is there because the switch, when you first connect a system to a switch, the port does not become active immediately. Um, there's a uh, protocol that gets run, it's called the spanning tree protocol, which we're going to cover later, um, that keeps the port disabled until it can verify that there's not a routing loop, or there's not, not, sorry, not a routing loop, a switch loop um, in, the, uh, in the network. So it's going to take a couple of seconds, usually between... Uh, 30 to 60 seconds for that to, to turn green, but eventually it will turn green, and there it goes, it just turned green. And now I have connectivity at layer two, the layer two connectivity, this is very important to remember. Um, computers talk to the switch at a layer two in the network, at layer two. So I have layer two connectivity. The next thing I want to do is I want to connect my switch to my router. So I'm going to click on the straight through cable again. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab the Gigabit Ethernet 01 and I'm going to connect that to my Gigabit Ethernet 00. Now one of the things to notice is that I'm, as I'm connecting these devices together, I can see the name of the interface that I'm connecting it to. Now one of the things that people do all the time is they forget um, what the name of the interface they connected it to is and, uh, is, and then what they'll, have, what they'll do is they'll be doing a lab and the lab will say something like Fast Ethernet 00 and they type in fast Ethernet 00 and they can't do anything because there is no fast Ethernet on this router. There's only gigabit Ethernet. Um, so one of the things you might want to do is, is it's a good habit to get into uh, the practice of drawing a diagram of what you're doing and as you connect things together, write down the interface that you've connected it to on the paper. So when I connect the, the computer to the switch, I connected it to FA0, uh, to fast Ethernet 01, so I'll type, I'll write on the switch FA01 where the computer connects in. And I connected the switch via gigabit uh, via the gigabit uh, zero one, and I connected it to the router at gigabit zero zero. And I can actually hover over in these little dots with my mouse, and I can see the actual interfaces that were that were utilized. Um, so now that I've connected them up. I can I can act, I actually have my connectivity now. Now, if you notice, these up here, this one up here at the top, uh, when I connected my switch to my router, is red. That is because a router, by default, has all of its interfaces disabled. They're shut down. Um, so when you connect a switch to a router, it does not work properly um, until you do the uh, no shut command. And we'll, sh we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'll show you the no shut command and show you how to, how to do that. Um, now, got my devices here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our router and we want to enable this interface. Now, we already we remember we connected it to the Gigabit 00, uh, ether, or the Gigabit Ethernet 00 interface. That's important. I want to make sure before I go into my router that I know what interface I need to configure. Um, I go ahead and go into my router, go into my command line, and I can start configuring my interfaces. Now, uh, again, uh, we, when we go into our router, we hit enter. We've already set our password, so I have to be able to log into my router. I know my password. The password is, uh, is Cisco. That's what I set it for. Uh, I need to go into enable mode. 
And again, I have to put in my password because of the last video we set our password. And now I'm into enable mode. Now again, um, in, a, in privilege exec mode or enable mode, you cannot make configuration changes to the router. If you try to set the IP address of your interface from this position in the router, you will get a failure because you can't do it. You have to be in config mode. You have to go config T and you get the word config. Again, in order to configure a router, you have to be in config mode and you can see it right there. Now, in config mode, you also have to be in interface config mode in order to configure the interface. Now, we already know from, our, from looking at our, our network map up there that we are looking for internet or interface G0 slash zero. So I'm gonna type in INT, which stands for interface. I can tab it out. I'm gonna type in G, which stands for gigabit ethernet, zero slash zero. And that's gonna take me into the interface configuration mode, which shows which you can see here. It says config if, which is the interface configuration mode. Now, uh, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set an IP address. Now, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the 192 network. So 192.168.1.1. And then you have to put in, uh, I'm sorry, whoop. You have to type in IP first, followed by address, followed by the IP address, 192.168.1.1. What I'm doing here is after each command, I'm putting in the question mark so I can see what the next uh, requirement is. And I'm gonna put in my subnet mask, 255.0, and I put in the question mark, and now it says CR. CR means carriage return, it means I've, I'm done. So I typed in IP space address space the IP address of the gateway because the router is the default gateway. The default gateway is the first IP of the network. In this case, I'm using the 192.168.1.0 network with a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. That's my first IP, and therefore it goes on my router. And I hit enter, and again, nothing happens. That's okay, that's supposed to be like that. When you do it correctly, the router won't tell you much of anything. Now, come over here and look at my, my network. I still have this red dot here. That's because I have not no shut the router. Now let's look at my uh, running configuration real quick. Let's do a do show run and go down to gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. There you can see my IP address, which I just set. Now look down here, it says shut down. The interface is shut down. Now the way to negate a command in uh, the iOS is to put a no in front of it. So if you are shut down, the way to not shut it down is to do the no shutdown command. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my interface configuration mode. I'm still there, I can type in the question mark and I can see right here is the word no. It lets me negate a command, which means get rid of it. So I'm gonna type in no space shut down. I'm just gonna type in SHU, hit the tab key, let it finish for me. now. As soon as I hit this button, this, uh, as soon as I hit enter, what's gonna happen is the router is gonna tell me that the interface has come up. There it is, it says uh, line proto five up down line protocol on interface gigabit ethernet zero slash zero change to state up. The reason why it's changed to state up is because I just brought it up um, by using the no shutdown command. If I come over and look here and look at my network, now I have the green light up here. Again, on the switch side, you're gonna have the orange light for about 30 to 60 seconds while it tries to, to verify that there are no spanning tree loops in the network. Again, we're gonna talk about spanning tree loops later. So now that I have my uh, interface up, um, I can go ahead and do a do right, and I can, uh, I can end out, out of this, and I've got it configured. Now, let's go on to configuring the computer. So the computer needs to have an IP address as well, and it also needs to have the configuration that tells it how to get to the default gateway. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the computer, and it's gonna bring up my PC uh, configuration box here. I'm gonna click on the desktop, and I'm gonna click, click on IP configuration up here in the top left-hand corner. Um, I have it set to static, because I wanna set a static IP, and I'm gonna make this the uh, 192.168.1.10 IP, Subnet mask is gonna be 255.255.255.0, and then my default gateway is gonna be the IP that I just set on the router, okay? Because your router is your default gateway. So I'm gonna set that up. Um, that's important because as we continue to expand our network, um, being able to get to the router is very important and knowing what the default gateway is, uh, is very important and that's how you tell it. So I have my IP address set, um, and now I can test connectivity um, by going back to my, uh, my desktop. I'm gonna click out of this. Exit out of that, I'm gonna go into my command prompt. And now I'm gonna use the ping command, ping 192.168.1.1. That's my router. 
Um, if everything works correctly, I should get responses from the router, and there it comes. I have a reply from the router, which means I can now talk to the router. Um, that's important because in order to be able to connect to the net, uh, out to the internet, I have to be able to talk to the router, and I can. Now in this uh, example, we have a very, very small network. We have a one computer network that can talk to the router. What happens if you have two networks? So let's go ahead and make that a, a two, let's make this a two, uh, a two switch network. We're going to go ahead and grab another switch, grab another 2950T, put it here. I'm going to grab another computer. We're going to put it up here. And I'm going to connect everything together. Again, I'm going to use a straight cable from the computer, fast Ethernet 0, going to fast Ethernet 0, 1. Again, you should be uh, writing this down if you're doing this yourself. You should be documenting on a piece of paper as you connect these devices together what interface you connected them to. And I'm going to connect my switch, again, gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 up to gigabit uh, 0 slash 1. Okay. Again, uh, as we did before, the connection to the router is red because um, the, the, I have not turned on that, that, uh, that interface. Um, so let's go in and configure our interface on the router. Um, go back into our configuration mode, our, our router uh, command line, and we're going to go into configuration mode, uh, going into config T. Um, now, interestingly enough, like I told you before, you can use the up arrow to get back to what you've already done before. Let me show you how I can do that, and it's going to help me configure my router a little bit quicker. I'm going to do the back arrow, I'm going to do the up arrow, and I'm going to go back to where I typed in interface gigabit 0 slash 0. I have to now go into gigabit, interf uh, gigabit uh, Ethernet, or interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. So I can up arrow to the one I did previously and just change the last 0 to a 1 and hit enter. And now I'm in the proper interface. I don't have to type the whole thing in again. That's where the up arrow really helps you. Again, with the setting of the IP address, let's say the network that I want to use is the 192 or the 192.168.2.0 network. I can up arrow to my previous IP address and change the third octet to a 2. And now I've got my IP address set. I only had to type a couple of keys to, re to do all of these commands, whereas before I had to type everything out manually. This is why the use of, this, of the up arrow is so important, because as you configure uh, multiple interfaces on the same device, you can just redo the commands and maybe change, a couple, maybe change one number and continue to use it without having to type everything in. Um, I'm also going to use the up arrow to do the no shut command. And now I have no shut my router. So I basically did a couple of keystrokes and was able to configure the entire interface. And let's go back and look at my interface and see if it's up. And it is. It's up and operational. Uh, so let's go back into my router. Let's do a uh, do run. Or I mean, sorry, a do, uh, a do write. And then we're going to end this. Let's do a show run. And I can see now that I have my two interfaces configured on two separate networks. I have this one configured for the 192.168.1.0 network, and I have this one configured for the 192.168.2.0 network. Um, and then we're going to go into our next thing I have to do is go into my computer on the other on that other side, do the same thing, do my IP uh, IP configuration 192.168.1. Uh, or sorry, excuse me, 2.10. Make sure you're in the right network. And my gateway will be 192.168.2.1. Uh, so now I have my, uh, my gateway set on my computer. I can test it again by going into the command prompt, doing a ping 192.168.2.1. Uh, Maybe if I typed it correctly. There we go. So now I have, I'm able to ping the router from my computer. Now, since I have two networks connected to the same router, I should be able to ping from computer to computer. So let me use my uh, let me use my up arrow. I'm going to change this to um, one dot ten, which is the computer that was on the other side of the network. And let's see if I can ping, and I can. So now I'm able to go from this computer up through the switch to the router, back down to the other side, and the packets are able to come back. So in this case, I have a very very simple network and I'm able to ping from one side of my simple network to the other. I've set my IP addresses on my network. Um, I've set my IP addresses up on the computers. I've set my IP addresses up on the interfaces, and now I have a basic, um, inter uh, basic routing network uh, working here. Uh, a couple things to, con to con consider. Um, just making sure that, again, when you set these up, when you start connecting devices together, make sure you're documenting um, where, where you're putting those cables, what interface you're working with. 
Um, this is a very simple network diagram, but as you build out your networks and you get bigger and bigger networks, trying to remember which interface that I connected to is very problematic. Um, and if you every time if you have to come over here and put your mouse over it and look at it, it also becomes very difficult. It can be time consuming. So take a few moments to write to draw out that diagram and write down as you're connecting your cables, as you're setting your IP addresses, um, what they are and where they're going. Another thing you can do is you can actually document stuff inside of Packet Tracer as you go. So for example, if I, I just set my IP addresses on these uh, routers. So what I can do is I can type in the IP address that I just set on that router and I can put that next to the interface that I just set. So I just set this interface to 192.168.2.1. I can put a little label there that says that is what it is. Let me uh, let me go to my preferences here and let me up my font a little bit so you can see that better. Um, my fonts and we're going to come up uh, just a little bit. Let's go to let's go to the let's go to a 12 12 font. There we go. Apply and see if that how that does it. How that does? Oh, I didn't do it. Uh, I need to do. Let's go workspace. Let's go to. Let's go to ten. Okay, there we go. So my I was able to increase my font a little bit, so it makes it easier to see. And I'm going to put another label over here. Uh, 182, 168, 1.1, and I'm going to move that over to the other router, and now I can actually document as I'm building out my packet tracer where all my IP addresses are, and then I can I can actually do the same thing here. I can uh, I can copy this one. Oh, I just clicked out of the. I can click on this. I can do an edit, copy, edit, paste. I can move this down here, and I can s change this to read dot ten. And as I'm going, so as I'm going through and building my network, I can document all the things that I'm doing in there, as well as doing it on a piece of paper. Either way works. You just want to make sure you're documenting stuff because again, as your network gets bigger and bigger, you're going to have more difficulty trying to set things up and trying to make sure everything uh, works accordingly. Um, so those are. Those are some of the basic configuration steps for configuring a router um, together, um, connecting basically two networks to a router, setting the IP addresses on the router. Um, so again, I hope that helped, uh, and then we'll be looking forward to uh, some more videos here in the near future.